Hey guys, Mr. Abel here. Um, <clears throat> by the way, what, were, were you guys going to tell me that I look kind of like a homeless man with this beard? For crying out loud. What's up with that? Anyway, hey, sorry I couldn't be with you, but um, this morning what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to plow through uh, chapter uh, 18, the expansion of Europe. Um, but keep in mind, as we talk about the expansion of Europe, one of the overlying questions is uh, what, what makes that possible? Um, the expansion of Europe. And it's kind of like thinking of uh, before and after. And before and after what? And so we put that in the context already of the Enlightenment, what came before and what came after, um, and what has changed. And if you remember that, um, that model that we put up on the board, you kind of had the, the cross on one hand and you had the brain on the other. Well, what had changed? And we used that example of the um, the, the, uh, the, the guy that had the uh, shop that his son was, uh, killed apparently when he committed suicide and what was Voltaire's response to that. And we kind of use that as an example of thinking, uh, before the enlightenment and then how that kind of thinking uh, became the hallmark of the enlightenment. So the expansion of Europe is kind of an extension of that, but in an economic way. So what conditions had changed? What was changing uh, that allowed Europe to expand in economic ways um, and in very real other ways, like, for instance, population, which was kind of the base of most of the expansion to begin with? Um, so what, we, what you guys are going to do is, first, I'm going to give you an example. It's 18.1 uh, on the Canvas handout. Um, of the agricultural revolution and what changed and how it changed. Um, but then I want you guys to use that as a model for the following four significant questions um, for the rest of the chapter. And I want you to use what I've done as a model, and then you're going to create uh, in groups of four, you guys are going to create um, your own model um, based on the templates that I provided for you there on Canvas. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so the expansion of Europe, chapter 18. Um, if you remember, the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution, we talked about <clears throat> that it really didn't affect common folk. Um, and it was really um, a movement that affected the elite on a very small segment of society. But the changes that the Scientific Revolution and the Enlightenment usher in are going to lay the groundwork for changes that will, in fact, affect everyone. I highly encourage you um, to read that chapter introduction on page 552 if you haven't already done so. It does a nice job of kind of setting that up, um, that the Enlightenment, the Scientific Revolution, and those movements um, weren't really uh, affecting the majority of the people, but rather affecting only a small uh, elite segment. But, again, those changes... Uh, and those ways of thinking are going to lay the groundwork for changes that will affect everyone, and that's what we're talking about in this chapter. And overall, the key in this to understanding this chapter is change from to, from what to what. And so this first segment that we're going to talk about is specifically talking about um, agriculture. So if you look at that chapter overview, it says, the expansion of Europe focuses on the economic and social history of the late 17th and 18th centuries a period of major changes in the way goods were produced, and that's key, the way goods were produced and sold in a surge of population, that's another key, surge in population, after centuries of stagnation. These changes set the stage for the extraordinary transformation created by the Industrial Revolution, which comes later, but we'll talk about that later, but this sets the foundation for it, which began at the end of this period. Okay, so again, um, these are some significant guiding questions for the entire chapter, not just this section. So what existed before the change? Again, think of that model that we had on the board where there was the cross and the brain. What was before and what came after? Um, exactly what is it that changed? And again, in this first section, we're talking about agriculture. But uh, when you explore the four key questions on your own here in just a minute, um, keep that in mind. What is it exactly that changed? And uh, most importantly, what was the significance of that change? What happened as a result of that change? Now, you don't need to do uh, a, the guiding questions for the um, entire chapter uh, or the chapter overview. Where you guys start um, was with key thoughts. 
and this is the key thoughts for the first section and the first key question. Um, the agricultural revolution consisted of new techniques of working with the land and new crops, which together greatly improved agricultural production. It began in the low countries, you need to know what the low countries are, and then England, where farmers drained wetlands to create more farmland, introduced new crops, and intensified crop rotations. We'll need to know what crop rotations are, too. Many of the new techniques of experimentation were products of the scientific revolution and enlightenment. Along with new techniques of farming came the enclosure of land. What's that? Which, land, uh, which had unintended consequences. What were those? To the landless poor. Who were they? No longer able to make a living by farming, their only option was to become wage laborers. What's that? Okay, so I'm not going to read through each one of these key terms, but what I do when I go through the chapter is as I'm reading, I'm simply pulling out the key terms that allow me to apply them to that larger concept. So if you have a question that you're trying to answer, um, obviously you have to have specific historic examples, and that's oftentimes what I'm mar I'll mark on your guys' papers, is you need more specific historic examples um, or examples that uh, assure me that you have deeper understanding. And this list of key terms are those terms that you should be able to use um, that answer the question but also demonstrate that you understand. Okay, so here we are. Compare and contrast the open field system with the enclosure movement. Now that's the key question. So what is the question asking? You know I hammer you on that. What exactly is the question asking? So it's asking you to compare and contrast, okay? You got that, compare and contrast what? Okay, the open field system with the enclosure movement. Okay, that's, that's fairly straightforward and simple enough, but within that question itself, in my view, there's three places that you could compare. And the first is the change in farming method itself. So the change in farming, it's a change from what to what, right? So it's a change from open field to closed field. A change of, from just survival to sustainability, from just getting by to abundance. Abundance and sustainability, two slightly different things, but it means that if you have abundance, that means you have extra, right? So you can sell extra. So that's a change, okay? And, uh, and, and implicit in that change um, is... Uh, some new technology and techniques in agriculture itself, such as crop rotation, a nitro understanding of nitrogen storing plants, and a 10-year schedule. Okay, and so another, the second uh, place where you can uh, do the comparison and contrast is the reason for that change. What was the reason for that change? Okay, so uh, huge in that equation is the increase in population, um, and also, especially for the low countries in England, population density, okay? So those are two things you want to look at and understand as you're comparing and contrasting uh, the switch from the open field system uh, to the enclosure movement. Um, and lastly, um, in comparing and contrasting those two things, well, what was the effect? What happened? What were some of the unintended consequences of those changes? So for instance, um, the idea of common rights to a market-oriented estate agriculture um, from peasant farming uh, to a landless rural wage earner. Okay, so that's the third component of understanding and answering that question. So what I want you guys to do is, um, loaded there on Canvas, are the next four critical questions for um, the unit or for the chapter. And I want you guys to do what I have just done. You, you, there's a template for you. I want you to dig out, you know, what are the key thoughts, what are the key ideas, and what are, and I want you to come up with at least two. If you got another one, that's great. At least two key questions um, uh, that are pertinent to that particular section, and then use that information to answer those questions. Hey, have a great day. See you when I get back.